Hey, welcome back to the boot camp series. So, did you finish your homework? Remember, I wanted you to create a simple website with at least two pages, maybe more, uh, where you link back and forth. And I wanted you to use CSS to make things look nice. Well, hopefully you created a basic website because by the end of this video, we're going to learn how to push it up onto the web so you can share it with anyone in the world. Now, usually it costs a bit of money to host a website live up on the web, uh, but we're going to leverage the amazing and free forever service offered by GitHub called GitHub Pages. Without further ado, let's jump into the technical action. Okay, so you have your files, right? You have your project folder uh, with your different HTML pages, your CSS, your images. And let's imagine now that you're happy with your website and you want to share it with the world. Well, as of right now, because the files only live on your personal computer, you're the only one that can view the site. So if we want this website to be publicly available, we need to move or push or copy these files up to a server or host somewhere. And this is where GitHub comes into play. Now really quick, before we move forward, I definitely want to distinguish between GitHub and just Git itself. So Git is a version control system. And this just means that it helps us manage and keep track of the way our files change over time. Now Git as a technology doesn't inherently have anything to do with GitHub. GitHub is just the most popular place on the web to host your Git projects or Git repositories, right? Hence the name, it's a central hub for Git projects. Now, if you pursue a career in this industry, you'll absolutely need to learn the basics of Git itself. There's no avoiding it. However, our goal in this lesson is not to learn Git. In this lesson, we're just going to learn the easiest and simplest way to get our files onto the GitHub servers. So big picture, eventually you will want to learn Git itself, but now is not that time. You can circle back to it later. And actually, this is a good time to point out that this entire bootcamp series is sponsored by me. So I actually have a 15 hour premium video course about Git. Well, it includes a lot of other topics as well, but it's called Get a Web Developer Job, Mastering the Modern Workflow. In this course, we learn about the Git technology itself and also some of the workflow tools that help us keep our CSS and other code super organized. Throughout the course, we create a modern, responsive website together, step by step. And if you're interested in checking it out, there's a heavily discounted coupon code in the description of this video that will let you join this course for the price of maybe a couple coffees at a cafe. Okay, one last note before we get back to the task at hand. I have another premium video course titled Web Design for Beginners. And if you're looking for a guided experience to sort of walk you through the different element types in HTML and just a lot of guided practice on HTML and CSS, then you might also be interested in this course. Again, there's a discounted link to join in the description of this YouTube video. Okay, now at this point, let's get back to the actual task and topic at hand. So you don't need to learn about Git at this exact moment. Right now, we just need to learn the easiest and simplest way to be able to push our files up on to the GitHub servers. So let's go ahead and get started. As you might have guessed, the very first step is to sign up for a completely free GitHub account. So in a new tab in your browser, go ahead and visit the GitHub website. It's just github.com and then sign up for a free account. You won't need to enter a credit card or any type of payment info. It's completely free. You can go ahead and pause this video while you sign up. And then once you have successfully signed up for an account, come back and resume the video. Okay, once you have a GitHub account, the next step is to download the GitHub desktop application. You can find this by either Googling for GitHub desktop or just visiting desktop.github.com. So when you come to this page, you'll see that there's a download available for either Windows or Mac. Just go ahead and download it and install it. So you can pause the video while the download and installation is going on and then come back and resume this video once you've installed and opened the program. 
Okay, when you first open the program, it will look something like this. And let's just go ahead and use this button to sign in to our github.com account. When you click this button, one of two things might happen. If it opens the browser that you've already just created an account with, it might log you in automatically, which is great. Or it might open a different web browser on your computer. For example, the difference between Chrome, Firefox, Internet Explorer, Safari, so on and so forth. So if it opens in a different browser, that's okay. Just go ahead and log in with the GitHub username and password you just chose a couple of minutes ago when you created your account. Next, you'll likely see a screen that looks something like this. And this is just GitHub asking us if we want to give the official GitHub desktop application permission to access our account. So we absolutely do trust the application. It's created by the official GitHub team. So down at the bottom, you can just click the authorize desktop or just the authorize button. Okay, and then it might ask you if you want to jump back to GitHub desktop. Go ahead and allow that. Okay, now back in the GitHub desktop application, just make sure you're happy with the name and email fields and then click continue. Personally, I don't like sharing any extra information, so I'm going to uncheck this yes, submit periodic usage stats, and then click finish. Okay, now at this point, we're interested in creating a new project. Now in the world of Git, we refer to a project as a repository. So let's click this button that says create a new repository on your hard drive. Okay, now we need to fill out a few form values. For the name of the repo or repository, let's just call it my-example-site. You could call it anything you want, that's just what I'm going with. We can leave the description blank. Now the local path is super important. I want you to pay attention to where it's pointing towards because that's where it's going to create a new empty folder and then we need to move our website files into that folder. So for example, on a Mac, it's going to create a new folder in my documents folder named GitHub. It might be slightly different on Windows, but the point is, is I just want you to pay attention to where this is pointing towards because we're going to reference this in just a moment. Anyways, all of these other options look okay, so let's go ahead and click this Create Repository button. Okay, at this point we've created our first project or our first repository. Now we just want to add our actual website files into this project. So for example, I have this simple three-page website. So I want to add the HTML, the CSS files, the image files. I want to add all of those files into my Git repo. Now before we can move the files into our repository, we first need to be aware of where they are on our computer in the first place. So in my case, I have a folder on my desktop with the example three page website. But big picture, here's what we're going to do. Here is my computer's documents folder and here's that GitHub folder that GitHub created for me. Now if I dig into this GitHub folder, here we see my example site. So the idea is you can have 10, 20, 30 different websites or different projects, and each one will have its own folder. So this particular project, let's jump into my example site. And now this is where you would move all of your HTML files and your CSS files and your image files. If you're having trouble navigating to this folder, you can always close it. And in the GitHub desktop program, in the top menu, you can click on repository and then click either show in Finder or show in Windows Explorer or something along those lines. That should take you to the exact same folder, so just dig into it. And again, this is where we would add our website files. So in my case, I'm just gonna open up this folder on my desktop, right? So this has the three HTML files for the three pages. It has my custom CSS, and it has my different images and photographs. So I'm just gonna select everything in this folder, and I'm just going to move it into that folder that GitHub Desktop created for our project. Now, as soon as we do that and then jump back into the GitHub desktop program, you'll notice all sorts of changes appear. This is because Git is tracking that folder. It's watching it for file changes. Now, by default, it's going to include all the files we added, but if there were a few files you didn't want in your project, you can just uncheck the checkbox. So for example, the Mac operating system creates these random little files named DS store. 
I don't actually need that for my website. So I could uncheck that checkbox for that file and now it will not be tracked or added to my repo. Anyways, with all of the other actually important files checked or added, we just need to add a summary of our changes. So in this summary field, I'm just gonna say my first commit. You could say anything, this isn't super important, but be aware that by default, your Git repo is public. So don't include any super secret or sensitive information in this message. Okay, and then let's go ahead and click this button that says commit to master, or in the future it might say commit to main. Either way, we're just trying to commit our changes. So let's click that button. Okay, cool. So now all of those important files are no longer showing up in this changes or changed area. At this point, we just wanna push our repo up to the GitHub servers. So up towards the top of this menu, right about here, we see this publish repository. Let's go ahead and push that. I don't want this to be a private repo because I want this to be a publicly viewable website. So I'm gonna uncheck this, keep this code private checkbox, and then let's click this publish repository button. Okay, cool. We just successfully sent our files to the GitHub servers. So now back in your browser where you're logged in with your github.com account, we just need to find our repo. So up in the top right corner of github.com, you can click on your profile avatar and then click your repositories. Okay, you should see the new repo we created just a moment ago, right? My example site, go ahead and click on that. Okay, now this is the overview screen for your project or repository. And because we chose to make it not private, that means the whole world can see this page. However, this is just a listing of our files. This isn't the actual three page example website. So there's just one more step. We need to go into settings. So right about here, let's click on settings. And then on this settings screen, if we scroll about two thirds of the way down the page, we're looking for this section named GitHub pages. So this is the feature we want to enable so that GitHub will actually host our files as a website. So we see this source option and by default it's set to none. So we just want to click on this little drop down box here for source and then choose our master branch. In the future this might read main branch instead but either way we're just interested in master or main. Go ahead and click on that. Okay you can see the page reloaded. GitHub pages source was saved and now if you scroll back down to that area that was called GitHub Pages, you will see a link, right? It says your site is ready to be published at, and then it gives you a URL. So I'm just gonna open that link in a new tab. And there we have it. This website at this address, so this is a real domain. So it's going to be your GitHub username dot github dot io, and then the name of this specific project or repo. This URL is available to the entire planet. So you can copy and paste this URL, send it to your friends, family, colleagues, whoever, and they will be able to view your website. Now, before we bring this lesson to a close, I do want to show you how you can update your website once it's up on GitHub. So for example, imagine I wanted to add an exclamation mark at the end of this header of my cool website. So first of all, you'd wanna make sure that you edit the correct file. So I'm not going to edit the file that was on my desktop. Instead, I wanna edit the file in the GitHub folder. So from GitHub desktop, you can always click repository and then show in finder, right? So this is that GitHub folder within my documents folder and then my specific project or repo. I would just open this in VS Code. So you can just drag this entire project folder onto a VS Code window. Okay, and then let's imagine in the animals.html file, maybe around line number 11, I want this My Cool Website heading to have an exclamation point at the end. So I can save that. And now back in the GitHub desktop program, you can see that shows up as a change in this changes area. And if you click on it, you can see it even shows you the exact line that you changed. Pretty cool. So I'm going to leave that file checked, but I don't necessarily want to add my random Mac OS DS store files. So I can uncheck those, leave the HTML file checked, and then add a summary, 
changed headline on animal page. And then I realize it's falling off the bottom of the screen, but down at the very bottom left corner, there will be a commit button. So then go ahead and click the commit button. Okay, once you've committed, we just wanna push or publish. So that's this button right here. We wanna to push to origin. In this case, origin means the GitHub servers. Let's click that. That could take maybe 10 seconds. Okay, but once it's done, back in our web browser, if I refresh, it might not show up right away. It might take hmm, 30 seconds. Through the magic of video editing, I can fast forward a bit, but if you wait just a little while and then refresh, perfect. So at this point, not only do you know enough about HTML and CSS to create a website, but now you know how to actually publish it and share it with the world. This is great. However, these basic types of websites are basically just brochures, right? They just sit there and they don't actually do anything uh, and your visitors can't actually interact with the site at all. So in order for our websites to be more than just a digital brochure, we need to learn about programming, which is the second chapter in this bootcamp series. However, I don't want to immediately jump into the next chapter. First, I want to give you a bit of closure on this design chapter because not all of you are in a hurry to move on to programming. Some of you will be super interested in design and you'll want to know what you can do next to continue growing in that area. So in our very next video, we're going to cover several sort of next steps when it comes to design. Big picture, don't worry, the programming chapter will be coming soon enough and it's gonna be a really fun change of pace. I hope you're enjoying this bootcamp series so far. I appreciate everyone who's working through this with me. Thank you for watching the videos. Take care, and I'll catch you in the next one.